more fun games than movies. This is Trailer Told, a YouTube channel in the world. Thank you for clicking. Subscriptions are a huge boost. I completed the entire campaign without any sighted assistance whatsoever. I did it. There is a blind person who defeated Uber Lilith by himself without any sighted assistance, without quote unquote easy mode. He did it because there were accessibility features. Didn't make the game easier. He's just a skilled gamer. I've gotten all sorts of reactions on people seeing me play video games, both from blind and sighted. I like having that ability to read what is being said while it is being said. Closed captioning is great, subtitles so much better. Diablo was one of the first games I played. After going completely blind, Diablo 3 was one of the games I really jumped into because I was like, you know what, it shouldn't be difficult. It is a top-down perspective. I just go left and right, up and down. This should not be difficult. Accessibility was taken into account really early on. It wasn't a game that they created and then tried to make accessible. It was a game that they wanted to make accessible from the get-go, and that influenced the decisions throughout. I've been playing video games for my entire life, but I have not been blind my entire life. I was actually blinded when I was eight years old, and obviously before I was blinded, I loved playing video games. After I was blinded, that love for video games didn't just go away. Especially after losing my sight when I was 15, I gravitated to gaming immensely because I, at the time I thought I couldn't do anything. Gaming was a way I can, even if it's hard because there's no accessibility or you know, the game itself is difficult, I can still do these things. I started gaming and content creation in 2020, like I think a lot of people did, and I used it as a creative outlet. And shortly after I started doing so, I found out that the reason I had such trouble with re reading certain things or writing uh, was I was dyslexic. If there's too much ambient sound in the room, I can't hear anything. I made it my goal to play video games no matter what. So much so that when I was a kid, I memorized every single sound in the Pokemon games just to play with my friends at school. It's very difficult for me to read the item descriptions. So having something read out to me what the stats actually are, what the percentages are, is super duper helpful. When Diablo 4 was announced, I created a clan within Diablo of all blind people. And so we settled on the name Sightless Slayers. And it is a very, very active Discord with very dedicated blind gamers. And as such, Drew McCrory, the accessibility lead for Diablo, joined the Sightless Slayers Discord and has been getting a ton of feedback from different blind gamers. And I think that's really important. Accessibility is a pretty big, mm -hmm. uh, audacious thing, yeah. but really saying that players, regardless of where they are in their journey, can find all of their needs handled so that they can come into a game and be able to experience it the way we want them to. A lot of conversations have been kicking off at Blizzard where we're, we're putting them under the label of inclusive design, where we're trying to have that conversation from the beginning so that the team can move forward with a unified vision of the feature you're trying to do. So here at my time at Blizzard, I think just from day one, um, I was taught like how important it is to include accessibility in the kind of research that I do, like even for things that aren't explicitly designed to address topics of, of accessibility, just like watching out for things that might like disrupt a player's experience and not like deliver the intended sort of like entertainment value that we're going for. When you include people with disabilities, they're experts on their disability. They can tell you exactly what they need. The uh, development team takes all the input that we give as far as different ways to improve. We work with our user research team and bring in players who have certain disabilities to test those features before they go live. That way we get that second you know, test, be like, hey, we think this is awesome. What do you guys think? Is this gonna work? I like to be able to sit in the room with a participant like this because not only can I see like what buttons they're pressing on this screen, I can also see like what they're seeing in real time. There's, there's a lot of benefits, I think, to working in this space. The accessibility community has made a very reasonable and clear request, which is nothing about us without us, which is what our team is actually really well equipped to serve on 
is that we can bring them into uh, our labs to be able to talk to them directly so that we can understand their real experiences. Being able to set up in a, in a space like this, uh, one of the main advantages is that console players are not right next uh, to their screen. And so being able to have them be you know, 20 feet away allows them to have that more naturalistic experience so that we can see, can they see that UI element if they're that far away from the screen? So and you know they give us feedback and then we build that iteration into this cycle that way you know what kind of goes out to the the end user is something that's really going to work my name is brock davis and i'm a test analyst and the accessibility subject matter expert for diablo 4 for qa it means that I get to test new accessibility features that comes out before the general public to make sure that there's no bugs in it. Why did you want to be a part of the games industry? I wanted to make an impact while being in the games industry and give the developers direct feedback on my perspective because as you can see in this interview my left hand is all over the place so I play games with only one hand. What are some of those accessibility features that you are regularly testing? The screen reader as well as the new contrast visibility feature that comes out with Season 4. So one of the new features we have in Diablo 4 that I'm super excited about is the screen reader. So it's a native uh, built-in screen reader allowing players to kind of experience all of the copious amounts of text that Diablo has read out to them as opposed to having to read the text themselves. A lot of the implementation of the screen reader tech was really taken from the approach of how would I want to use this and I would really do my best to understand it from a user's perspective of how if I was reliant upon this how would I want it to work. I can never pretend to be someone that has a disability that I don't share. And the immediate feedback was, this is too slow. And the, this participant was very nice and turned on the screen reader where he wanted it, the speed he wanted it to be. And it was completely unintelligible to me how fast it was going. And now you hear my screen reader reading everything. It's telling me the mana, it's telling me I'm fighting a shambling corpse. But I like having it really fast because I'm able to get the information faster, I'm able to understand it. Now I'm going to slow down the screen reader a bit so you can kind of hear. I see they're nearby, but I think I'm like stuck behind some wall. Oh, no, there they are. Oh, we're finding an elite now. It even mentions when there's an elite. Oh, I just heard a rusty key. Like, I have seen so many screen reader updates. When the game first came out, there are some things that it didn't read, and I think that's the beauty about Diablo as a live service game, is that accessibility can be continuously added throughout the years. And I think that's so, so important because personally, that's gonna keep me coming back to the game over and over again. So when we're looking to make a game more accessible, we look to see where there's rough corners, things that are going to uh, be abrasive and kind of turn players off or represent uh, meaningful blocks to players kind of stepping in. If you go into the options right now in Diablo 4, you'll actually notice that a lot of the options are duplicated in the accessibility menu and in potentially other areas of it. Certain things that I have in my gameplay, obviously cursor, having the cursor a uh, different style, different color so it stands out. Easily selected right here. One of my favorite item drop sounds, being able to have a different sound for specific qualities of gear. Highlight player when obscured. I love this and it happens in the fields of hatred and the surrounding areas. I can see exactly where I'm at at all times. But it's funny because whenever uh, I first had this turned on and I was telling people, they said, I had no idea you could do that. I think it can be really easy to hear community feedback about accessibility and think, well, I know what to do about that. We'll just try to patch that in. It's a very different thing to have people who have those concerns and who have those accessibility needs help influence the design of the accessibility features themselves. That's a very different philosophy. For Diablo, I would say my favorite class right now is Sork. I equipped a burning to my attacks, and whenever a burning attack makes contact with an enemy, it makes this kind of like thud sound, like this boom, boom. 
and it's like really easy to hear when I'm actually hitting the enemy. When we were creating the sorcerer chain lightning sound, we would record a bunch of, of random objects like wax paper. We'll take all this source and then bring it into our, our sound design tool and augment it even more. And then in the game, when it's playing back, when we make a cool loop that sounds like neat electricity, it'll actually Doppler around the player too. So it kind of pitches up as it's coming towards you or goes away. I'm, I'm somebody that no matter what game I'm playing, I'm gonna play it with all of the volume sounds on. It's very helpful for me to understand my position in the game. And I also use it to cue my abilities. Even if I can't pay attention to everything that's happening on screen at once, I do have ADHD and sometimes I'm paying attention to the wrong thing on screen. I use the audio cues to help me figure out what's happening, where it's happening, and what I need to be focusing on next. There's a reason why blind gamers were even playing Diablo 3 without any screen reader, without pretty much any accessibility feature, was simply because of the sound design alone. In, in my opinion, accessibility and audio go hand in hand. You can have all the accessibility in the world, but if the audio of the game itself does not convey the spatial sound or enough sound cues to understand what's happening, then even with all the accessibility, it's still gonna be a, a challenge. We spend a lot of effort putting as much sound as we can to almost everything in the game. So that way people can play, and if they weren't able to see the screen, then they can at least, you know, uh, maneuver around and know what's in the area. Something clever, I, I'm not sure if other blind gamers did this or if it was just me, but when I get to like an uh, intersection or like a fork, I'll drop an uncommon and so I know if I backtrack, I'm like, oh, okay, I've been here. We also have play audio on object loot, uh, which is really cool because it'll play an ambient loop that is tied to the loot in the game world. So then I'm gonna drop an item here. What's neat about this is that we took the sounds of the drop sounds, um, I like to call them blingy sounds that really stick out in the mix. It sounds kind of magical and also very kind of UI-like. We take that and we make a loop out of that and those play on the objects themselves. Drop these boots. Check that out. There is that ambient sound and it's pretty much like a waypoint and I love that. It's a really humbling thing to play that way and then realize how much work and mental effort our current players are putting in to, to play the game. What I love about my job is getting to, to talk to players because, you know, both personally and professionally for me, video games are so important. Being able to see like how impactful they are for people's like mental health and not just entertainment, but also like how it's a sense of connection. I mean, my philosophy, and I think Diablo 4's philosophy too, is the more options you have, the more people get to play. Don't assume that whatever streamer or whatever random player you're encountering in your game could or could not be disabled because you don't know what sort of features or their things they could be using. You don't know what their situation is. You know, a lot of people who might run into myself or, or any of our other blind players, they don't know where blind players. My goal in this industry is to help make games more accessible and better for all. It's pretty eye-opening when, when we know that people are playing our game who are visually impaired and they can't see the game. Like we, That just makes us pour that much more effort into every little sound. It's very inspiring to know that people are playing our game just audibly. Accessibility isn't just for blind people or for disabled people. It's good design. It benefits everyone. I think the one thing I do love challenging myself with is going toe to toe with people with sight because then it just shows how incredible game accessibility is, how much potential it allows blind and disabled gamers to have. And we really hope that the changes that are going in uh, help players to feel heard. I sometimes collect uh, comments from surveys or what have you that say, I don't know if anyone's reading this. I hope someone is reading this. Some, somebody is, right? And we're, and we're getting those to the, to the right people. So I hope players feel encouraged uh, that, their, that their voices are being heard in the different number of ways to, to give their feedback. I hope gamers in general can start to move towards accepting the idea that anybody can play games, anybody should be welcome to play games, and that a gamer can look like anyone. Having to figure out ways to adapt your gameplay to uh, actually enjoy and progress through things is the reverse of the way it should be. You should be able to go and control and enjoy it. And it's fun. Go and kill demons and look for loot. Mm -hmm.